those who go through the Dominican Republic in a hurry are left with the impression that the island is a tropical paradise. Especially those who just visit La Romana, which may be the most exclusive tourist resort of the Antilles. Airplanes belonging to Johnny Agnelli, Oscar de la Renta, or Julio Iglesias land on the private runway of La Romana. These personalities go to their private residences within the resort. On the rocks, an artificial beach has been created, which is inaccessible to everyone not residing in La Romana. From morning to night, entertainment is created for them. Those having fun here do not know, or do not want to know, that these impeccable golf courses facing the sea have been created on lands which have been expropriated from the peasants of the area. Other tourist resorts, which are less exclusive, lie along the Boca Chica beach. The objective is similar to that of La Romana, to keep the visitor happily enclosed within the area. He is offered everything that he might need to prevent him from leaving the area and spending money in another place. Certain entertainers have become fashionable, young men who entertain the women. I work as an entertainer. I try to entertain the tourists who come here to the hotel. Could you say that your job is mainly entertaining the women tourists? No, I entertain everyone, all the guests, women as well as men. One, two, one. The main role of the entertainers is to teach the people to dance the typical rhythms of this area. It's hard work for the teacher and for the one learning, who generally lacks the special grace that Caribbeans have for dancing. There are people who take the risk of going outside the tourist resort. They want to mix with the native population and get to know a more real world. Boca Chica Beach is the best example of so-called sexual tourism. In certain areas, it is a genuine open-air sex market. All possibilities are offered. Young women for older men, young men for mature women, muscular young men who offer themselves to businessmen. This young man guarantees safe sex. This is a protection. It's a lifesaver for us. Now, is this to show people who are going to have sexual contact with you that they are not going to have any problems? More or less. But do you like the tourists or not? They're better than the Dominicans in some respect. How could you walk all over the girls of your country just like that? They're all the same because they're women and they make love like everyone else. I don't see it. That's not right. With foreign girls, I get the money and I spend it with my Dominican girls at the discotheque, right? The Dominicans. I spend the money with the Dominicans. The foreign girls give me the money. All in an environment that seems like a constant party.
Prostitution is not a party taken out of the framework of palm trees and golden sands. Street prostitution shows its most sordid and dramatic aspects. Do you like your work? Dislike it? Or does it seem to you just like any other job? I dislike it a lot. It is like any other job. I dislike it. Could it even be said that you find it repulsive? I find it repulsive. Yes, unpleasant. Do you find it repulsive? Did you experience any sexual abuse when you were a little girl? Did you suffer any sexual abuse from any family member? Yes. I was abused by an uncle of mine. Was it from that time that you started to dislike sex? Yes, I suffered a trauma. The police come almost every day still. We stand there doing nothing and they come and take one of us. They take her to jail. She stays there for three or four days without the family knowing anything. Do they also ask you for money? Sometimes we have to give it to them if we have it. If we don't have it, they take us to jail. Do they try to have sexual relations with you? Yes, but for me, to avoid having sex with them, I give them 20 or 25 pesos because they're going to take someone to jail anyway. They may not take one today, but the next day they'll take someone, and I would rather not have sex with them. I would rather pay them, or I let them take me to jail. They are the kind of people who want to cover the sun with one finger, you know. This business of prostitution is worldwide, but here, they don't want to see things clearly. Did the police ask you for money? Of course. If we don't give it to them, they treat us any way they want. Do they try to have sex with you? That too. My mother cries a lot. She thinks of all the diseases that are around, like AIDS, and that we can get them. When you have sex, do you use a condom? Yes. And the clients, are they willing to use them? Yes, there are many that do. There are many that don't like to, and you just say that you have to take care of yourself. Yes, we use the condom. And do all clients agree? Yes, they all agree. Why? Are they beginning to be afraid of AIDS? Yes, with all the rumors, the frequency of, of everything that's said about AIDS, they are also aware of that, and they agree to put on the condom. Before, they didn't want to, did they? Before, they didn't want to. Not me. How am I going to put that on? Also, there are some who don't want to use it. Then they tell us, for example, they offer you 100 pesos more. They say, I'm going to give you 200 pesos for you to do it without it. And we don't accept, because with 100 pesos more, we're not going to cure the AIDS or venereal disease or any disease that we might get. Have you had any problems with a sadistic client, one who was sexually violent towards you? Well, one day in the Palakeo, a long time ago, I went with a man there in the Palakeo in his car, and he wanted me to make love with him, but he wouldn't give me any money. And since I refused to do it, he took out a revolver. But he didn't do anything to me. I don't know if it is because of my character that I come on strong with them. When I see them start to act up, I tell them I have a knife and they are terrified. We street women always suffer. Some like that. It's the main thing. Those that smoke drugs, they want you to make forced love without giving any money. There are many who, after making love with you, they refuse to pay. And in order to avoid problems, you just leave it like that. And it's that way because we all go through that. Because here there are a lot of sex maniacs. What type of violence have you suffered? There are many that feel emotions like when they are with you doing the sex act, they do bad things to you, they'll put a cigarette on you, they'll grab your hair here and burn you there, like they feel more that way, and then they ask you to hit them. Has any of those things happened to you? That's why I'm telling it to you. Poverty is not the only determining factor for practicing prostitution. Es una causa, puede ser una determinante, pero el ejemplo 
It is one cause. It can be a determining cause. But the basic elemental example is that in industrialized countries, there are prostituted women. And that is connected to the woman's condition of subordination, which does not change because we're dealing with a developed country versus not developed one. Men go on repeating the same patriarchal patterns, whether here in the Caribbean or in the northern countries. Attorney Carmen Imberts indicates that the correct way to define these women is not as prostitutes, but rather as prostituted women. To say prostitute is assuming that the essence of a woman is doing a sexual job like that as a prostitute. A woman prostitutes herself, or she is prostituted, because there is a man who buys her sexual favors. She's not going to stop. She's not going to be prostituted if there weren't that prostituting man. And so behind, besides, in front of, on top of, or underneath of a prostituted woman, there is a prostituting man. If not, that condition wouldn't exist. That variation of female subordination wouldn't exist. Concerning prostitution, the most distinguished intellectuals of the country have spoken. The opportunities, the rigidity of the sexual division of work in the country gave very few opportunities to women. And the more access she had to education, the more she saw the possibility to progress in the city, to develop herself. But then what happens? Neither the country nor the city offers opportunities to anyone. This is a country without electrical power, without employment, without opportunities, almost without a future. It is a country in which the people feel that every day they're being smothered more and more in the day-to-day -day routines. Everyone has three or four jobs. There isn't a possibility for joy, for leisure, and people want to go. Everyone, as Juan Luis Guerra says, is dreaming of a visa in this country. Almost daily on the normal Iberia flight, it's possible to see 12 to 15 women who, even though a native Dominican does not need a visa to enter Spain and only needs to present a few dollars showing her solvency, the immigration officer, just by looking at her, decides that perhaps she's going to prostitute herself and sends her back. The vice president of the Dominican Revolutionary Party is the only woman who became head of her own party. Because in a survey we made of some prostitutes for a seminary many years ago, when we interviewed those prostitute girls, they said, when they were asked when they would stop that kind of activity, they said, when we find another type of work. These girls go out of the country and look for another type of work or for a job that they've not found here. They're deceived later. They're practically kidnapped. Their passports are retained along with their identity documents. And those vicious circle starts, those terrible and evil circles when they owe more and more to the owner of the house where they practice. They owe them the food. They owe them their clothing. They owe them the room that they use, even to offer their services. And many times they end up in debt and trapped.